wandering the uh, streets of Columbia. He wants to rip my freaking throat out. That's two fish. <laughs> That's two of these big payara. I don't know what it is. Very pretty. Welcome to this week's Woo! episode of Wild Fish Wild Places. What am I? Uh, bear, bear, quay, day there. Bear. He said where we're going, very large peacock bass. Uh, and he wants to take it. Bear, bear, quay, thank you very much. Uh, copy. Okay. Okay. And he wishes he could go with us, but unfortunately the wife is at home with the whipping stick. Is that what I... Thank you, thank you very well, <laughs> mister. And he loves America. Yeah! Yes, sir. <laughs> I thought it was a nightclub, but it turns out it's a zoo. It does say restaurant. <laughs> back to the Villa Vicencio Airport, getting ready to fly out to Puerto de Nardia to catch some huge peacock bass. We just finished up the zoo and a meat lunch with our boy Andres. And it's oh, not yeah. for vegetarian. Ooh, there's a problem with your passport. You won't be able to fish with us. Seriously. Just follow me. What? Oh. Seriously? Uh, oh well, let's go fishing. For me, fishing has been a part of my whole life. From the time I could walk, I've been traveling and fishing to chase and hook the big one. My name is Dennis Isbister, and I live in the deserts of Nevada. Growing up, fishing meant catching crab off the coast or trout in streams. Fishing with my family has always been a big part of my life. My name is Drew Murin, and I'm not your typical Western angler. This is Wild Fish, Wild Places. Couldn't make it. We hope he makes it on the next adventure. We're heading out to Porta and Nerdia. The good news is we've got two boy bands on the on the plane with us. I think it's some sort of a Nerdia Palooza. We could be checking it out later. I don't know. We're going to catch peacock bass. <laughs> We're supposed to go chase some vampire fish tonight at a big set of falls. As you can see, it got kind of dark on us. Really dark. And what that means in the jungle, thunder and lightning. So I don't know what's going to happen. We're supposed to go check in with our passports and go fishing. But we're going to see what the weather does first. We're going to wait and see what happens. It seems it's kind of stormy right now. So we're just waiting to see if it's So the thunder, the lightning. Yeah. Tell him in Spanish, quit being a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> no, <un> pendejo. <laughs> no, pendejo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's how you get them on your side here. After Drew got sent home, I'm still in Colombia once again on my own. This is a fast response boat we're taking on the river. In case the Payara get out of control, we got a couple 50 cows on the front. <laughs> we're, we're cruising down the Guaviati River, and it's basically the split between the Orinoco Basin and the plains and the Amazon rainforest jungle. And you can actually see on this side it's more of a flat plains, a little bit more barren, and on this side it's thick jungle. Amazing.
little change in the story. We were told peacock bass, we get here, Payara. So we've got some great, I mean, you can see this beautiful big rocks, giant flow. We're gonna chase Payara, uh, see what we can come up with. Looks good. Oh, right there. <laughs> First pyre we landed here in the spot, little fella. Awesome fish. Had a couple bigger ones on. Lost them in the current, but they're definitely here. Amazing species right there. We're fishing in a spot. We've been working these pyre this afternoon and a boat comes comes you know up on us pretty quick and they're yelling at us and pointing us couldn't quite figure out what they were talking about. Well, it turns out they're Venezuelans, and they're telling us we're not allowed to fish here. So we've got somewhat of an international incident starting to happen. These guys are talking, these guys are talking, a lot of Spanish, I don't understand most of it. Sometimes I think to myself, you know, just doing a bass fishing show in my backyard might be a better program. to make camp at a different spot about four hours away or so. It's a bambino. We'll take it. Well, at least we know there's a fish here. Eat it. Readily eat it. We're taking an interesting little hike this morning on the top of the mountain. We're heading up there to get a view down here where we've been fishing. Got this beautiful river valley we're looking over. We got our guide, we got a rope, a ladder possibly over some rocks. <laughs> Should be pretty entertaining. Coco, he's picking for us. We're gonna open this up, add 14,000 milligrams of sugar in it, and eat it. To get here, we drove our boat from what seemed like sunrise on the Venezuelan border deep into the Amazon jungle to sunset. I hope it's worth it, it's been a long ride. We started out this morning in Porta Inertia, Southeast Colombia, which in most people's book would be the middle of nowhere. But we got on a boat and went five more hours into the jungle. We've got some guys with us, some people you'll recognize, but we've got one extra hitchhiker the chief of the village that we're staying in tonight. He decided to pick up a ride with us. We're chasing peacock bass. It should be amazing. We woke up this morning to some fog and it made the air almost chilly. <laughs> Honestly, chilly in the Amazon, really. <laughs>
Amazonian River that pours into the Orinoco Basin. And this creek called Caño Bocón, or Bocón Creek, pours into the Iniria. This is where the big, big monster peacock lived in this watershed. Nice fish. Damn, that's a nice fish, boys and girls. What'd you say, Andre? 12? Nailed it. 12 pounds. Nice. <laughs> Ow! It's biting me. Now this one doesn't have any bars. peacock bass fishing and it's exciting because there's a lot of different ways to catch these fish but first we have to find out what these fish are keyed into Fish though, it's beautiful. The coolest thing about going after peacock bass is each fish has such unique marking and each subspecies looks even different yet. Ciclar Innocensis, what a beautiful fish. Very colorful. Instead of having the bars, they have the rosette and they have no um, spots on the uh, cheeks. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. <laughs> we, we just moved into this lagoon. We saw a blow up, but definitely fish chasing bait. We both threw back in there. He's running a jig, I'm running top water. And the jig definitely catches more fish, but usually just catches smaller ones. Andres, in general, just usually catches smaller fish than I do. <laughs> Right out in the middle of this lagoon. Oh man. Oh, watch out, watch out. It's been working around this big lagoon. We just kind of started in the mouth. Had a couple of blow ups. Had a couple of blow ups, worked our way in, and then this thing just exploded on us. Oh, power. Look at how pretty that thing is. Another 12 pounder. Check that bad boy out. <laughs> nice. 12 pounds, top water grab. That's what you work hard all day for. Some of the. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's awesome.
When the rain comes here in the jungle, you put your electronics away. Luckily, Andre's had his camera ready during the big rainstorm so we can show you a big fish. Sitting here this morning, Andre's brought a little pH tester from home. We tested the water. Tell me what this yellow means. Well, yellow here in the spectrum, in this little card, this is what I use for my uh, aquarium. It says the pH on my aquarium. Yellow is basically uh, an acid water, and I just did the uh, test with this liquid here and it came out to 6.0, which is, it means it's acid. And all these uh, jungle waters are acid because of the um, rotting leaves. They release tannins, and that's why the, the, the water it looks dark, like uh, tea. And in, in theory, I mean, it's been pretty clear, but it's also a very dark stained water. Exactly. And that's because of the rotting leaves in, in, the, jungle. in the jungle. And you say the farther north you get, the better, the more alkaline yeah, you get. Yeah, actually, if you go to the Orinoco, Waters are still, quote, black and acid, but not as acid as, as they are here because huh. there's less foliage rotting away. I hope we've been able to show you around this beautiful country. It's our second time here, and as we've said, it's safe, it's beautiful, and the fishing is incredible. <laughs> my, first, my first pyara! Man, I've been waiting to catch these. Look at the teeth on that thing. Kind of look like crap, it. dude. Vampire fish. I don't know what it is. Very pretty. Kind of looks like a... A red fish, a kubinata. <laughs> Ow, it's biting me. When you pull into each one of these lagoons, they're all so different. Different places to cast to, and you're just thinking, how big a fish are in here? We are seriously <laughs> fishing out of a hollowed out log with a motor. The downside, not all the water staying outside of the canoe. The upside, well, it's working. <laughs> in top water but here this is the place where sticking the top water really pays off <laughs> Just what we wanted to see. One blowing up bait on the surface. Wow. Got my rod in, pulled up. Right Made a cast. Oh Ooh, yeah. Andres, he's been great. We've seen more of Colombia in the last two weeks than most people that lived here their whole life. If you want a chance to knock Colombia off your bucket list, look him up. You won't regret it. Yeah. Dude, yes! <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Oh, all right.